Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Skulk. Continuing Major Minor. Well, that was definitely weird. Maybe he didn't like what he saw. I've never heard a, of a reader backing out. Or, not like, not to make you worry, Azure. Maybe he just noticed the long lineup. <laughs> Rushed us in here to stay on schedule. I have to admit, there was something off about Leto. If he didn't take, if he didn't like what he saw, that was an ill omen. Especially given my role as a savior of Terra. But I shrug it off. I don't believe in that anyway. Whatever happens next, Leto could never predict. Especially if Ray, uh, Ryo was right about my true potential. Looks just like I no. Just looks like. Bleh. Looks just like it did when I left. When I left it. I sure wish Demian was here right now. Our mission. We we finally succeeded. He smiles as he examines the royal halls. It must feel good for him to get back. This is what he's been trying to do all along. I guess everyone's going to the ballroom. I don't blame them. That's the best place. The rest of the castle isn't as pretty. He points to where a crowd of people were walking. I guess that's where the real party would be happening. Oh, but I guess you have other plans. You have a meeting with the king, right? I guess we can't waste time like they can. That's a, sh that's a shame, though. It's amazing. And it'll be so full of people. If only we could put the world on pause. I wonder if my meeting with Elskews could wait. Connor is definitely making the party sound amazing. Should I see the king now or ask Connor to the ball? I, I'm not gonna be holding back on something. Now, I did, did, I did that baby. I did save, so I could be witnessing it. But I, I am not gonna be one to just be all nonchalant about it. I'm going off to Valsky. I'll let him know that this is where, uh, well, part ways. With. I let him know this is where we'll be parting ways. After all, my meeting with Falskus was important. All right, I expected as much. Don't get into too much trouble, all right? Maybe I'll see you around after your chat. But tell Falskus I brought you. He'll have to arrange my some payment. Maybe I can split it with you instead. Well, he probably would have worded it. I can split it with you instead, because it was meant to be a payment for him and Edemian. He starts walking toward the ballroom by himself. I feel bad, but I couldn't leave Valsky's waiting. Losing sight so close to the end would be a bad thing. I place my foot on the bottom step and look up. It was happening. I could finally meet the king. Everything I've done, it's led up to this moment. I ascend the stairs, my mind hard at work. I imagine a million different scenarios in my head. But soon enough, I'd know the truth about everything. What my power truly was, and what Valskews wanted. When I reach the top of the stairs, I see a large door. Clearly this is the throne room of Valskews. I gulp audibly as I stare at its in intricate design. Seriously, how do you hear a gulp? How solid is that saliva going down your s gullet? <laughs> it did a good job of making the inhabitants seem grand. I opened the door with a large sense of hesitance, wondering what fate uh, awaited me and all of my friends. I saved just nearly just moments ago. Just because I'm curious, I'm going to start saving in alternate uh, spots. I could have done this on other situations and see how things would have turned out. Connor is definitely the situation I wanted to have, uh, the person I wanted to go with. I'm wondering how it would have gone with Max. But I might not be able to go to that unless I start the whole thing over again. Because this was probably right after. 
I <laughs> I chose. Because Trish talked to me before we left. Well, crap. <laughs> I hope things are going well. I'm starting to worry, to be honest. Today is a big day for all of us. Kaylin, he'll be fine. You're worrying over nothing. I'd say they got this one in the back. Besides, you and Rydie are both here. If anything happens, you'll protect us. We don't have anything to worry about. Sorry. I guess you're right. I've just been a little on my edge lately. Being in prison and then that big fight. Why didn't anyone come sooner? Come on. Hangnail. I sent mail for a demon and Connor. This all could have been avoided. There's no point in worrying over the past. Remember, the future is what's important. Especially with what Adger is doing. I really believe in him, you know? He hasn't even gone, uh, been gone for that long. I can already start to feel uh, start to feel change. I believe it. Uh, I, I'll believe it when I see it, PB. I'm sorry, but I need to be excused. Some time alone would be great right now. Well, what's gone into him? Oh well, I'm sure he'll be fine. Is everything okay, BB? Kalian looked a little upset. I'm not sure everything will be fine. I feel like he did more harm than good. Especially with what he did for Riley. Well, he got what he deserved in the end. He he won't be able to push us around anymore. True, but innocent people died. And I'm scared it might not be over yet. Just then, a visitor knocks on the tavern door. Is it those two? Is it those two stinkers? Probably. People can't even read anymore. The sign says we're closed for the day. In disregards to PB's uh, declaration, did knock harder. Don't worry, PB. I'll handle it. I don't think they're about to stop. Fidget leaves his brother behind and goes to the door. They keep knocking. It must be important. I hope it's Mom. Now that would be nice. He slowly opens it to greet the uh, persistent guest. Yep. Hey there. Welcome to the Wayfair. We're closed, but I'll help anyway. Is there something I can do for you today? This is the testament to Father's failure. Built to satisfy an, an en enraged population? I'd say it's no longer needed, Nagi. Correct as usual, sister. See, brother, sister, but the previous one they said my love. What? <laughs> and no, we don't need any help. But you're a cute pest. I'll give you that. Yeah, it's a shame he had to get involved. Let's get this out of the way quickly, Nagi. I don't like killing the little ones. Chapter 10, The Future We Create. No! Fidget. This experience is surreal. I don't know how to feel. After everything I've been through, I'm finally here. A whirlwind of emotion overtakes me, and I panic. There are two thrones in, the, in this room, side by side. One is beautiful white, and the other a dark black. I wonder which one does Valsky's rule Terra from? I scan the room and take in my surroundings. It's a part of me that finds this room familiar. Of course, I accept that as an impossibility. There's no way I've ever been here before. I'm not sure where Valeskews is, and this concerns me. 
but as if to startle, the door behind me slammed shut. I quickly turned uh, to look and see a man clad in royal gear. It's finally happening. This is Valskius. After all this time, you're finally here. I started to think you might not make it. Please, offer me your hand, Asher. He puts forth his hand and looks at me expectantly. It's not in my nature to leave a king waiting like this. I quickly put my hand forward and introduce myself. He has a gri firm grip and happily le leads the intersection. I know exactly who you are. There's no need for introductions today. If I'm not mistaken, you know me as well. He releases the grip on my hand and walks away. Moving towards the thrones, I promptly follow suit. However, he doesn't sit. He stands between them. I was told you met Nagi and Na uh, Nami and Nagi earlier. That must have been unfortunate. Errant children often cause headaches. He rests one hand on each of the thrones and sighs. Errant children? What do you mean by that? I get the feeling I'm not in for a short discussion. Honestly, I'm not sure where to start. I've envisioned this day for a long time. But now that we are here, I'm at a loss. I'm sure you know the truth about Terra. A reservoir for the souls of the dead. My own personal haven. Or hell. There are a little more complex, however. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. But permit me to speak before you inquire. You deserve to know the truth of things. So I will be nothing less than transparent. Please sit tight and listen to my tale. The people know I'm not from Terra, but they don't know my true origin, nor the reason I have lived in eternity. I come from a large federation of worlds, a galactic community living in harmony. Of course, this is millions of years ago. I can no longer be certain of their status. Terra does not exist in the same space, so I've been out of contact for a long time. Earth as well cannot reach out. We are in our own reality plane. Billions of these closed off space exist. Billions of these closed off spaces exist. Ah. They are given complete an, uh, autom uh, autonomy. You could even say they got s stranded, unable to return to the Federation. When I left it behind, it was hurting. We were in the need of new sources of energy. So they looked to the brightest minds. They gave these uh, visionaries world stones, the technology to create these planes, and the ability to share their own reality. It was their job to, f uh, to found a utopia. A utopia. <laughs> it was their job to found a utopia and to create a new source of energy. Something that could help us stay afloat. And if they did make a new energy source, they'd use it to break out of their plane. they present this power to the Federation. But the power required would be vast. Breaking free would be a sign of success. Otherwise, they'd be stranded forever. Though that wasn't really a bad thing, that was the secret nature of this project. If the Federation died, we would live. Their catastrophe would not reach us inside, and we would only break out if we succeeded. It was a frail it was a failsafe in both directions. Yes, I received several of these stones. I used them to try and save the Federation, but instead I caused so much disaster. The first thing I did was create Terra, a place for me to hide if things failed. My very own utopia, away from harm. 
Then I had to create another world. A world where I'd conduct this experiment. After all, I was a Federation scientist. But I thought outside of the box. If I created it, I knew I'd fail. I was uncertain and afraid. Our deepest feelings enter our, our creations. I couldn't paint this canvas without doubt. Not I couldn't paint this with... Not <sighs> I couldn't paint this canvas with doubt. If I did, it would quickly meet its end. So I created a short sort of bridge. A place between worlds, connecting them. Somewhere to experiment and watch from afar. A celestial observatory deck, you could say. Close, yet too far for collateral damage. That's when I took the next step in my plan. I used the stones to create two beings. They were made in the image of perfection. They wouldn't have the doubt what I that I did. Their sole purpose was to succeed. Error wasn't in their nature. They surely carry out my goal. Yes, I created Nami and Naki. I created Terra and the Ark as well. All using the power from these world stones. After that, I fixed the stones to a spear. And I gave my creations a special gift. The ability to create a perfect world. They made what would become Earth. Standing on the bridge, they used the spear. They fulfilled the duty I created for them for. Hey, isn't this what Rocker is talking about back then? <laughs> but I've learned perfection is fleeting. Or at least sabotaged by our own curiosity. They wanted to know more about themselves. This desire for knowledge hurt the Earth. They started to neglect their duties. Yawns! Not now! I had no choice. I had to open to the, up to them. But they were not accepting of the truth. We were all thralls of the Federation. They said they'd rather not exist. I felt guilt for creating them. They only lived to serve the Federation. But instead of guilt, they felt anger. I couldn't stand up to them. They embody the power of the stones, but they held a, a weaponized version, too. I begged them not to kill me, but they said they had far worse plans. They'd make the Federation suffer first. They wanted to see who was playing God. Who was condemning people of these fates? Coming, who's condemning people to these fates? Even if I was for, even if it was for the greater good, I'm sure they would want to kill them. They'd seek to tear the Federation apart. They were convinced this was a just cause. To that end, they broke free. You see. The stones weren't living beings. They couldn't grow stronger with experience. But Nami and Nagi could, and did. I cursed the fact that I created them. My abstract thinking condemned us all. But they didn't just leave me behind. They engaged in a ritual before they left. Something to curse me for what I had done. They used a spear to plague Earth. Disease, famine, death, and darkness. They wreaked havoc on what we created. This broke the spear into three fragments. Two of them are the weapons they carry. The third, they hid away from me on Earth. They told me they'd return one day, after they met the Federation's leader. That's when they would finish me off. They wanted me to suffer for eternity. Watch Earth fall apart from their curse. I'd see my entire cause fall before me. They had the power to destroy the galaxy. They'd rampage in search of the Federation. 
and I'd never get that third fragment. My creation would crumble before me. They would destroy the people I served. And then they would come back to kill me. At least, that's what they thought. But I'm not what you'd call foolish. I didn't give them all of this world's stones. I kept some to myself. A contingency plan. But this time, I did the opposite. I created a being to help me rule Earth. However, I didn't model them to be perfect. I wouldn't hold them to such standards. But together, we would rule over the worlds. They would call the Ark their home. Ryu was a fine ruler and son. He helped govern Nagi and Nami's curse. He was in control of the force of death. This helped Earth stay correctly po uh, populated. He could even prevent the spread of disease. He kept the balance of things in check. But I noticed something peculiar. A byproduct of my children using stones. Death had an aspect of power to it. When someone died, energy was released. I don't know how to explain this, but it was an, unfa an unfathomable moment. I guess you could call it a spirit, but we had no way to utilize that energy. So the spirit simply withered and vanished. At that point, Ryu had an idea. Their spirits could find, uh, can find form on Terra. When they died, they'd come to my paradise. I agreed without a moment of hesitation. We put it into effect as soon as we could. I used the last of my world stones for this, but I knew that it would be worth it. The energy started flowing through Terra. When they arrived, we wiped their memory. We made them think they fled their home. They wanted to start a new life, a new in terror. Their life energy would no longer be wasted. We even created a questionnaire for them. They told us their likes, and we, and we catered. Terra had its own laws of reality. It expanded to accommodate this traffic. You could call it a growing paradise. That is what gave Terra its image. We were always open for immigration. However, they were only coming from Earth. I did have a utilizer motive. Uh, ult ult ulterior. No. I did have an ulterior motive, though. I wanted to grow this power on Terra. Maybe one day, it would be enough to escape. Then I could help the Federation. Or, if anything was left of it. I had no way of seeing this situation. But it didn't work as I intended. The power was far too diluted. I needed a way to concent uh, concentrate it. However, I had other things to worry about. This traffic was starting to corrupt Terra. Nami and Nagi's curse was quickly spreading. The more people died, the worse it got. It even corrupted Ryu into what he is now. Warped his powers, gave him more abilities. Terra got the brunt of it, though. Disease, famine, death, it all came here. And no longer was the world expanding. It turned my paradise into a living hell. We, beca we became overpopulated very quickly. You couldn't walk without hitting someone. This made me realize something shocking. Nami and Nagi would be gathering power. Their rampage would result in lots of deaths. But they held the ability to concentrate it. If I wanted that, I'd need the fragment. So Ryu and I started looking thoroughly. We 
looked and searched all over Earth. In constant fear of Nagi and Nami's power, they had far too much of a head start. Eventually, we found the fragment. With everything in place, we planned. How do we grow enough power to stop them? We had to set a trap. They could likely sense energy, so we needed enough to lure them back. But my past had taught me one thing. The stones in my scepter were not enough. I needed to make something living. Something that could grow exponentially. So the third fragment was the scepter? As unbelievable as this is, I was following along. He had a way of explaining things in a clear fashion. I need to reconnect again. Sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, we wanted to lure them back. We'd unleash the power and tap into theirs. After all, they were harvesting too. I had to assume they held more power, so we only needed to get their attention. When they came, I'd spring the trap. Everything would be present in one room. All three fragments, them and our lure. A battle would luckily ensue, but everything would be connected. We could unleash every bit of power. That's when I'd break free from here. But I wouldn't stop at just that. I'd go to the break. Uh, I'd go on to break out every reality plane. It would s cause a massive chain reaction, and in the l and in the end, we'd all be free. We could live in harmony like before. We'd open trade routes and help each other. All of the connections would be open. This what has always been my goal, Azure. The Federation would live on, and billions of worlds could coexist. I do what no one else could accomplish. That's what I told the people too. I was just selective in my wording. They could never know their true nature. Okay. Let me make sure I have this straight. He created gods, and they went on to rebel. They cursed the Earth, so Falskus made Ryu. But eventually, Terra became cursed as well. Nami and Nagi wanted to destroy the Federation, so they were likely harvesting energy from death. This meant they were destroying reality planes. Falskus wanted to kill them and save the Federation. But he wouldn't just stop at saving the Federation, he'd give freedom to all of the reality planes. This would pull them into the same physical space. A new universe would be born, completely connected. If that was to happen, he'd need to lure them back. This meant concentrating power in his own vessel. If they came to harvest it, a battle would ensue. All of that power in a single room would be unleashed. This is what Valskius would use to carry out his plan. He combined his energy with the energy they harvested. It would be like when Nagi tried to unleash my power. However, instead of destruction, it would be liberation. And that is when one incredible fact dawned on me. Yes, I see you figured it out. About 10 years ago, I started a movement. I presented it as the Exodus Project. I promised I'd open all of the connections. It was always destined to fail, Azure. At least the public would see it that way. But from my view, I set things in motion. I gathered many of Terra's brightest minds, much like the Federation did in the past. Together, we'd plan a course of action. We needed to create a living being, a vessel with a power of the world bestowed. Such a feat seemed almost impossible. But one night, I was struck by inspiration, a method that would surely accomplish this. Of 
course, I could never tell the others. It involved their sacrifice, Azure. I killed them and stored them in my staff until I had enough power to serve my goal. I'm not proud of my actions. I didn't want to take after Nami and Nagi, but I needed enough power to create a lure. Then Valskus killed PB and Fidget's mother? That's a horrible thing to do. I'm shocked. Don't jump to conclusions, Azure. They are still alive and well, just held within the vessel I created. And that's where I was quite dishonest. The Exodus Project was not a failure. In fact, it created you. I take a few steps back and my confusion intensifies. I start to panic, and that was the last thing I expected. This feeling must be akin to what Nami and Nagi felt. Am I just a pawn? A Valiscus? A Federation? Please, my child, do not panic. It is not as complicated as you think. Allow me to continue explaining. You are to help Terra's overpopulation. You take a fraction of Earth's souls. This would ease our troubles and grow power. But when a Terran died, they faded away. The remaining power ended up wasted. So I made that go to you as well. I couldn't stop immigration completely. So I found a slight loophole, if you will. All the power would still end up inside you. You house the souls of billions. That's why they said that, uh, like, that's why Rocker and Kyla said that there's so many voices in here. But when he's talking straight to me, it was just him and me. So, holy crap, we're housing the dead. <laughs> there are limitless power, uh, there is limitless power within you. The most beautiful of my creations. I don't know how to feel, this doesn't make sense. What about my memories, and my name? I know this must be shocking and revelation, but all of these souls fight for dominance. You may inherit their memories or ideals. Your true name is not Azure Tamarin. One of the lost souls gave you this uh, moniker. Someone strong enough to influence you, and control you they did, for a while now. But the other souls still fought this you might have noticed some inner conflict. Maybe you said something you didn't mean, or your thoughts seemed unlike you. If not, then I consider you self, I consider yourself lucky. You have a sort of omnipotence. You can see events happening away from you, much like Ryu has his special sight. But you do not retain this information. Only the souls that witness it do. It's weird, knowing and not knowing. That would be the source of any doubt. Memories conflicting with Azure's soul. It would definitely make you seem ignorant. But you are nothing of a sort, my child. And you won't hold these souls forever. You'll have freedom when the battle is over. You'll be able to retain your physical form, but you'll hold on to the strongest soul. You'll truly become Azure. That is, if there is enough power. So we must hope you are strong enough. So when he held our hand and saw, he says, so many deaths. It's not so many deaths that had happened, maybe. It's that many deaths happened and we're housing them. Ah. Things are coming together. Thank you. So we must hope you are strong enough. And that Nami and Nagi have enough as well. I don't think I've ever been more confused. So I was an alignment of billions of souls. Uh, amalgamation, sorry. An amalgamation of billions of souls? And Azure was the name of the strongest soul within? I didn't like this. 
but I could gain my independence. And it explained how I met with people who have died. They must have been stored in me as the vessel. They had to be a way to release them or revive them. I noticed he didn't mention Ryu in his plan. Or, Ryu or his plan. Was he keeping that secret? Even from Valescu's? I noticed he didn't mention Ryu or his plan. Was he keeping that a secret? Even from Valescu's? Who? If that's the case, I feel good about my odds. Ryu had been growing this power for an eternity. But Ryu told me he didn't know about uh, know what my power was. It's odd that sending souls to Terra was his idea. It wasn't a hard connection to make, if you knew. They were both aware of the energy death created. It could be another lie, or maybe he forgot. He'd been living the same cycle over and over. His only objective was to grow this power within me. I feel unworthy of such devotion, even from Ryu. But yes, and sympathy for the devil. But yes, that's the story. Now you know the entire truth. You are made to fight Nami and Nagi. You'll defeat them and unleash the power. Then you can reshape reality as you wish. You don't have to take after my ideals, but I know there is no evil within you. So the universe uh, is capable. Uh, so the universe is in capable hands. I trust your judgment, Azure Tamarin. Just then, the throne room door was kicked open. I didn't even get a chance to process all this, but at that moment, I realized I'd never get to. Nami strolls down the red carpet towards us. What a beautiful story, Father. Obviously warped in your favor. Don't listen to him, Azure. Nami, it is not your it is not yet time. I'm speaking with my child. We have much to discuss. So the Exodus Project made you, huh? I knew there was something about you. But I wasn't able to make the connection. Father mentioned the project succeeded, but I didn't know you were its creation. A living vessel, just like Nagi and I. You can't be the only one, though. We should have won in that ball. Someone tapped into the flow of power. Father, you are a horrible man. We went on to create more slaves. Why didn't you learn your lesson? I did, Nami. I truly did. That is why Azure and Ryu won't fail. I've placed all of my hope on them. So the other one is called Ryu. Another name to add to my list. None of them have been able to escape my wrath. Father, you are a foolish man. I can't believe Azure would trust you. You only create others for your own gain. Nami looks at me, displaying signs of sadness. She lowers her sword, as if to show a lack of hostility. Father is a pawn, creating more pawns. He doesn't love his creations. If they rebel, he wants to kill them. I'm sure he's planning our demise. And it's likely he wants to use you. But that's all he ever does. Use people. All of Earth. And all of Terra. It's full of pawns to achieve his goal. Unre uh, renewed sustenance for the Federation. Nobody here exists beyond that purpose. And that is the harsh truth of things. The Federation thinks they can play God. Or at least, they did think that. What? Nami flourishes her sword before attacking Valskus. She skewers the blade through his gut, smirking. Looking straight into his eyes, she laughs. Your federation is no more, father. Destroying it was almost too easy. 
Our sights have been set much higher now. But I've waited so long for this. The chance to destroy your dreams and punish you for everything you've done. Blood drips on the floor. I look in shock. I want to do something, but I can't come between them. I'm paralyzed in fear as I watch Nami kill Valskews. Nami, please. We had such a hopeful experience, uh, existence. We had the potential to do anything, but in the end, we were slaves. I believe in a life of limitless purpose, not a life planned out by a creator. You can't tie me down with strings, Father. We lost all hope when you told us the truth. And now, I will do the same to you. Our fe your federation is gone, completely erased. You've waited millions of years, and it was all for nothing. No hope exists. You can't stop us. Valskews trembles, losing a severe amount of blood. There is distance between them, as the blade is so long. No, Nami. You're wrong. Hope will always exist within us. Even when it seems like there's nothing gone. Uh, like there's... Even when it seems like there is none. It's up to us to chase after it. Instead of that, you gave up. Only those who persevere will survive. He grabs the blade and pushes it deeper inside of him. It causes him more pain, but closes the distance. He takes steps as he does this, moving towards Nami. Father? You lashed out instead of looking for hope. I am not to blame for your tantrum. Well, there's one thing I know for sure. He impales himself further, taking more steps forward. A trail of blood spills behind him, and he gets weaker. Do you think you destroyed the Federation? But it is based on the idea of unity. And Nami. An idea can never die. He finally closes enough to take action. He grips his scepter and drives it through her chest. He grunts in pain, twisting the blade within him. Valskews coughs at blood and turns to look at me. I knew this was over. He wasn't coming back. Azure. The rest is up to you. Shape reality as you see fit. Do what I always knew you could. Nami turns the gear on her blade, crying in pain. The room fills with a flash of white light. But I can see the look on their faces. Sorrow. Like a father and daughter, we greeting, uh, re re regret regretting lost time. Another one bites the dust. And when it subsides, they're both gone. The only thing remaining is Nami's sword on the ground. I walk towards it slowly, with a sense of anxiety. Did all of their energy merge into this blade? I kneel down and pick it up with intense hesitation. If that was the case, its power was incredible. The power of Nami, the scepter, and myself. If anything could stop Nagi, it was this. But when I pick it up, I hear clapping behind me. I turn to see Nagi standing by the throne room doors. He must have been watching and enjoying the show. His slow claps echo loudly through the chambers. He walks towards me and takes out his blade. I do the same in turn, and we meet in the middle. We stand in front of each other, weapons outstretched. I can feel beads of sweat make their way down my body. Do you really think you can win, Azure? 
Remember what happened last time. You got lucky, but it won't happen twice. I stand my ground and grip the swords tighter. Last time, I didn't stand a chance, but with a sword, I might be able to win. Especially if it's connected to the power within me. We've harvested for an eternity, you know. You were only created a decade ago. What makes you think you're stronger? Nami was much weaker than I am, and the Scepter's power is almost gone. I don't see how you could defeat me. You might as well give up. Or at the very least, join me. Not everybody can wield that blade. He's insane. He's insane if he thinks I'd want to join him. He and Nami must have destroyed so many reality planes. The lives of countless billions were in his blade in his blade. I wanted to free them, not harvest more. But at the same time, he could easily defeat me. I'm unsure if I had enough power to stand up to him. There's a part inside me that wants to join him. The souls inside of me must be fighting one another. Conflicted, I presume. It's no surprise, given what you are. You're not so different, you know. We're not so different, you know. Tools created by Father? No. Tools created by the Federation. Only left with doubt when told the truth. If you didn't help him, he'd kill you. He did it to Nami without any hesitation. We are only fighting our freedom. Uh, we are only fighting for our freedom. He lowers his blade like Nami did earlier. Then he stared into my eyes and smiles. Don't you want freedom too? Your destiny has never been your own. Everything has been decided for you. I'm not as evil as Father made me out to be. I just went against his horrific ideals. He believes that slavery is acceptable. It's not just my freedom that I desire. I desire freedom for every living being. For that, the shackles must be destroyed. In this case, it was the Federation. And the scientists chose uh, choose his as uh, chosen his pawns. Believe me, they've been destroyed. But I realize there's even more. Our journey has been long, but I know it's nowhere near complete. There's nothing to connect anymore. We've harvested everything, Azure. Your reason to exist is now invalid. But trust me, I know that pain. Nami and I endured it for an eternity. All in the name of our noble goal. I can tell what you are thinking right now. So many souls are connected within you. And contained within you. All fighting each other for dominance. Their viewpoints may always conflict. But one desire will be universal. They all want freedom, to live again. I want that for you as well, Asher. But I won't just stop at you. I'll make sure everybody is truly free. I can't tell if he's genuine or playing with me. As soon as he mentions inner conflict, my mind fires up. Millions of voices sound in my head, and it's insane. He uses this chance to start walking towards me. I can no longer grasp what thoughts are my own. Do I agree with Nagi or do I oppose him? My grip on the blade tightens and then loosens. His confusion allows him to keep reproaching me. I mean you no harm. We don't have to fight. Not yet. I'll give you a chance to decide. Father told you a twisted tale. He must have made me seem so evil. But I have a tale of my own, and I'd love to tell it to you. He approaches me and places a hand on my shoulder. It feels like when Ryu did the same thing to me. It's familiar, yet a little worrisome. I don't think Nagi would be 
talking to, uh, taking me to the Ark. You'll get the chance to see my home. I'm enveloped in a flash of white light. Much like when Nami, uh, Nami spun the gear on her blade. But this is different. We're moving. For a moment, I wonder where he could be taking me. Yes, I would. It's Now, this is the reason why sometimes I'm going, maybe, maybe 48 or 50 minutes, maybe I should save, because I don't know when the next save point will be. Holy crap, this is a long save point. But it was still a beautiful amount of story. Anyway, let's save on a new save file. And I'm going to cut this in half for sure. It's a, it's now an hour and 35 minutes, 36 minutes now. So, if you don't hear the intro, that's yeah, because I cut it in half. So, thank you guys for stopping by. The story... Well, I'll just say it feels like it's coming to an end. But we still have yet to read and such. So thank you guys for stopping by. And I'll tell you, see you guys again. Have a great day, everyone.